Hello and welcome to episode 25 of the BitSocket podcast. I am established host Scott White. I am non-established host Richie Morgan. That's right. Joe has sadly left us for another plane of existence in Japan for a fortnight. So rather than get behind my legit and ironclad schedule, I thought I'd get a wee guest in. So we've got Richie Morgan from GameWank and the Films. Is this... The first guest. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. I'm cashing in my VL card right now <laughs> to have you here. How does it feel? Uh, it's pretty good. It's pretty That's good. good. So um, you... I've got pretty big shoes to fill. Like, right? well, what size are you in shoes? Uh, ten and a half. Joe is an eleven. Oh, so oh, right. and everyone knows the half is for width as well. So really, you're <laughs> just a ten with a wi- you're just a ten with a wide foot. <laughs> Can you mimic Not that laugh? Different. What Joe's laugh? Joe's fucking manic laugh. Is it? It's a bit high. There's a high pitch element to it. I, I couldn't even attempt. There's a bit of a manic element to it. There's something a bit unhinged. Oh, can't do That's it. quite good. That's quite good. So no, can't do it. Your attempt sounds a bit like you're a lord, <laughs> but I can accept that. So that was really uh, bad. No, just so, cut in Joe's actual. Just cut laugh. in Joe's actual laugh. Uh, so as we always do, and as every video game podcast since the beginning of time has started, I'm going to ask you, Richie. What have you been playing recently? Well, the uh, game that I completed, it's not a very long game, but uh, I started playing Broken Age. Oh, right, cool. Because I've been watching the... When Broken Age went into to development, two-player mm-hmm. productions made a documentary yeah. following the entire development, and it was amazing. I strongly recommend it if you've got any interest in the creative process at all. It's mm-hmm. a very long, very in-depth series. But the one thing that the, the documentary did do was hammer into me how much I wanted to play... That and other double fine games. So I picked up Broken Age mainly also because you get to a point in the documentary where it starts to show you spoilers. Yeah. For some reason I had it in my head that the game when it was released had a bit of a lukewarm response. Mm-hmm. But I don't think that's the case. I've I think it was fairly I think it was a fairly warm response. I think probably it was because I'm sure now don't quote me on this. Mm-hmm. It was because it's it's part one they've released and yeah, then they said part right. two they needed money right. the money from part one to make part two, although part one was funded a lot by, a Kickstarter. by Kickstarter. It's, so. Yeah, I mean, if you watch the documentary, you can see that decision being made and all of mm-hmm. that happening. But as far as the documentary goes, basically what happens is obviously they made a lot more money from the yeah. Kickstarter. So they increased the scope of the project and tried to make it... As big as they could. Yeah. And then they got to a point where they, the schedule that they had, mm-hmm. uh, they realised that they weren't going to be able to get to the end of that schedule. So what they did is that they, yeah, they've essentially decided that they would... Kill, uh, they would end it at the end of Act 1 mm-hmm. and then they would use the the money that they made from the sales of the first one to fund the second one. Yeah. And uh, they've been doing things as well, like, you know, they ported Brutal Legend to PC and stuff and got a wee bit Act extra money. Oh. Well, no, they, I mean, you know, it was enough to get... How much money do you think that would have made, honestly? Mm, I don't imagine a lot, but, you know, it was enough. There was a sort of, like... There was sort was of there a demand for been, it? Has there been a demand for Brutal Legend on the I, PC? I doubt it. But in terms of, as far as the game itself, it's a 2D point-and-click adventure. Mm-hmm. But it's got this really lovely art style, just lovely score, lovely presentation style. What else have we been playing? What have you been playing? Nice. I've <laughs> been playing uh, Shanty. I think it's so Shanty and the Pirate's Curse. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm pretty sure that's the name of the game. Is that the one that was free on the iPad for a minute? Might have been. Right, okay, possibly been playing it. On no the, idea. Uh, but I've been playing the 3DS version. Yeah, okay, okay. Um, because I, I say because well, I think it was the 25th anniversary of Way Forward or yeah. something like. There's some kind of anniversary, and so they had games cheap, uh, and it's excellent. Really, really good. A good sense of humour. It's yeah, yeah. some of the the art in it is a wee bit. I don't know. Its version of the female form <laughs> is a little off-putting. Right, I think okay. it'd be fair to say, especially for a game that I think would be really good for an all ages style game. Yeah, Sometimes yeah. I'm like, oh, really? Is that that what we're going for? But is the game plays really, really solid. The boss battles are really good fun, and it's got dungeons in it, like legitimately good fun dungeons. Right, like okay. in the game, you're going to different islands, and each at the end of each island, once you defeat a boss, you get a map to go to the next island. And then in the island, you usually have maybe like a 10, 15 minute quest to try and get you to the point where you can then get into the dungeon. Mm-hmm. The dungeons are not too long, but there's a few save points throughout them, and then you fight a boss. And in each dungeon, you get Zelda style essentially. You get an extra item that will help you navigate. 
and you can kind of go back and forth. But it's really, really good fun. Really, it looks amazing. Really beautifully animated. And the music's great. I think the music's by the same person that shoot the music for Shovel Knight. I was about to say, I remember the music for the Game Boy Color one being really, really good. So mm-hmm. No, it's really, it's, it's a lovely polish. And it, was, it wasn't it was a sale, but it was it is really excellent. I think I will go back and play the other shanty games you can download on the, the eShop as well. Right. Let's get into a feature. Up first, Five Minutes in Heaven with Richie. <laughs> Now, one of our recurring features on the podcast is Five Minutes in Heaven with Joe. But as we've already covered, Joe is actually literally now in heaven. So, what we've got is guest Richie. Say hello, Richie, again. Hi. Mm, I suppose that'll do. Richie (laughs) is going to play five minutes of a game. And he's going to give us a wee review while he plays it and give us a definitive verdict at the end as well. So, without further ado, Richie, are you ready? A a definitive... (laughs) This is going to go on Metacritic. (laughs) So the ga- this game for episode 25 is the demo for Final Fantasy 15. Why? Because it was there on the console when Richie came in. And that'll do. So without further ado, five minutes begins now. Uh, right, okay. JRPG is obviously very, um, just ideal for demos really. Especially five minutes of a demo. Yeah. You can really get, <laughs> you can figure everything out quite quickly. Right, so, so I'm playing, I seem to be playing as uh, the Backstreet Boys. Mm-hmm. And right, so I walk into this. No, no, no. Okay, um, that's a safe point. It's already safe. It's okay. Right, I'm gonna I'm gonna run down this hill. Okay. Oh, I know that's. No, you can keep going. <laughs> okay, it's cool. They're just your pals. Right, I'm not. I don't have a lot of experience with Final Fantasy. Oh, so you've gone oh, into right. a fight. Now, square to attack. Okay. Uh, if your enemy's far away, you can hit X and you can have warp towards them. In fact, the enemy's the enemy lost interest and walked away. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's like how you know like some animals can smell if you're not well. This one could smell that you're just not <laughs> worth it. <laughs> oh, there's a road. Yep. This is exciting. Can I steal a car? No. It's weird that. <laughs> the the point of the demo is actually that your own car is actually broken down, so you have to save up money to buy that, Did the I parts. just throw up some stats sort of post fight? Be- is yeah, that why everything I got zero points for everything because I just because ran away did. from the fight. Because you did nothing. I couldn't yeah. see what I was fighting. It just sort of. I don't know what happened. Did I fight oh, this truck. That car just stopped the second you stepped onto the road. It just. No. Nope. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Richie breaking the game. Quick, get in the that. back. See, see if you pick up some hitchhikers. No. 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 Oh God, I'm re- this is not going well. Um, okay, so I'm just going to fire up the road for a bit. It'll take me five minutes before I meet anything, this surely. Is, this is fascinating. I've not really seen this bit of the demo yet. Oh! <laughs> Richie, just in case you don't know what that noise was, Richie just took his sword out and got a wee shock. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. See, if you turn around the other way, I think you might find some more interesting things. Like, So okay. go over to the road, and then further up, kind of back almost the way you were going, and you'll be able to get into the forest. This is a bit like playing games with your mum, isn't it? It's... Except, do I you mean, find me attractive? <laughs> do you find your mum attractive? <laughs> so I have to answer that, it's okay. Right. It's okay. Uh, so, where are what, we now? We must be, what, most the so way through see the if you five go, minutes. See if you go right and jump down there, so it'll take you into, hopefully, hopefully we'll see a fight or something. Um, so say, so how do you think it looks? It looks lovely. Mm-hmm. Um, very, <laughs> going back to the parent chat, it looks very realistic. You keep going back to the road, Richie, I think... Well, it said, You're a bit it came, it, right, it said that I was Just about to enter a fight there, so I tried yeah. to see what I was fighting, and mm-hmm. I haven't seen if it that, yet. If the red bar appears, hit R1, and it will zoom in on like the nearest ah, enemy. Ah, right, okay. Then you can hit X to kind of dash towards them. Checking this rock. The point of the demo is you're looking to fight a great big monster to get some uh, bounty, so then someone can then fix your car. Right, right, okay. But so far, some people have managed to get... Is that guy wearing a kilt? Uh, no. No, it looks like he's just got a, a long shirt. <laughs> the demo itself, some people have managed to actually get, like, ground zero levels of play out of this so far. Some people say they've put about seven or eight hours into the demo so far. Wow, okay. The game itself, they kind of say it should usually take between two and four hours. Is that because it takes about three hours to meet a monster? It's certainly, when you're walking in circles, it's pretty hard to find <laughs> a monster. This would probably be the best game for you. You would never run out of things to do. <laughs> Load it up, take him for a wee run, go back to the safe point. <laughs> Can I climb up on this rock? Oh. That was fun. Ah, nothing's happening. Oh. oh, there we go. Right, there we go. Right. So hit X. 
Oh, nice. And then square to attack. Defend is holding down L1. Uh, use up some of your magic, but it means your guys kind of dodging about. So, it, right, okay, so... Oh, this is not what I'm used to with Final Fantasy combat. Mm-hmm. Bearing in mind that the latest Final Fantasy I played is 7, so... So you're up to date? Yeah. Sweet. So when they are further away, hit X, warp towards them. So we warp straight. Uh, and then as you're hitting them, your different style of attacks when you're in your combo, you choose different swords you can use. So you can have like a big like spear or big two-handed sword. Things like that. And your companions will help you as you go. If right. you get hurt, they'll heal you and you can do the same uh, to them as well. Nice. Okay. And then triangle does your special attacks, which uses up magic. If you use up all your magic, it goes into like a stasis mode where like it can hit things but it kinda gets it kinda stumbles about quite a lot. Oh, I seem to have walked away from but it. If you keep holding down R1, it'll kind of guide you. Ah, right, cool. Oh, that's but I need to finish You know what, the... I'm going to let you finish this fight because you've spent most of this time wandering about. Yay! There you go. I beat the saber tusk claw. How do, how do you feel? I feel alive. You feel alive? <laughs> so, so you've played the game for five minutes. You've, you've had one fight, which lasted 30 seconds. Yeah. Is this the best game you've ever played? Yes. It's, um... No, well, I, I might go home and download the, the demo now because so I'm a wee bit more interested. So the demo, demo it, you have to pay, you have to buy the forty pound game oh, for f- first. So I think it's a good investment, though. Think about it. All you have to do is buy a forty pound game, and you can play this free demo. Out? When's it out? Probably later this year. Ah, oh, it's not. Um, this this is my entire Final Fantasy fifteen experience. Then probably, <laughs> <laughs> I think what they will do. I think the chances of them bringing out the, the the demo normally. They've said right now they're not going to. I think they will because it's a good selling tool. Because yeah. this, like for example, without you playing fifteen, you're probably not likely to want to play it. But playing something like this, which is a big feels like a big chunk of the game, mm-hmm. that's going to make you more interested than in actually paying fifty quid or whatever it is when the game finally comes out. Yeah. So, did you enjoy it? I did, I did. When things started happening, it just became a lot of fun. Is it the best game you've played for five minutes? Um, Be honest, it's cool. It's cool if it's not. The best game I've played for five minutes, yeah. specifically. I don't know, it might. It could be the... I guess most games that I've only played for five minutes, I've switched them up because I didn't like them, so possibly yes. There we go, so that's got the, the Richie Morgan seal of approval. Yes, yes. I'm just going to say a definitive yes. So ten out of ten? Ten out of ten. Out of ten. Best ten out of ten out of ten! <laughs> <laughs> ten tens out of ten. Ten tens out of ten. <laughs> All of my multiple personalities think this is the best game they've ever played. <laughs> and that was Five Minutes in Heaven with Richie, which, let's be honest, it won't be a canon entry into a series, but it was fun to watch him fumble about. <laughs> for it wasn't minutes. the most heavenly five minutes. <laughs> it was not the most heavenly. That's still to come. Mm. <laughs> You're damn right, as So, what we're going to do now, a regular feature that we've done that, to be honest, we hadn't done it for a wee while, but recently I've been really enjoying doing it again, is Sinister Bottom. Now, Richie, I'm going to have to explain to you what Sinister Bottom is, I'm assuming. Yes. Yes, fantastic. So, <laughs> this feature essentially um, is based around people who are plagiarising essays at university. Right. And okay. what they were doing was just taking a whole essay, putting it through a thesaurus. And then just submitting it, hoping that they could get away with it. One of the lecturers there said the phrase that stuck out the most to him was sinister bottom, because that was left behind. <laughs> and I've taken, I've essentially taken the whole idea, <laughs> so Richie, <laughs> gotten himself laughing, it's fantastic. So that's pretty good. And as I've taken that idea, sinister bottom, so what I do is I take the titles of video games, I put them through a thesaurus, oh. and you've got to figure out... I like this. What video game this it is? is. Good. Okay. Now this I've is, actually. I was about to say this reminds me of uh, when I was in high school and we had to do our whatever the piece of writing you have to do in. Oh no, it's creative writing. Yeah. In, in higher English. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was a guy sitting next to me. He used the the story section from mm-hmm. a video game manual. Nice for his essay. I don't know what mark he got, but the teacher didn't pick up on it at all. Really, he did have a lot of changes though. Fun enough, as a sidebar, we went to school with a guy who got uh, an A for higher English because he went to the, the exam and now they usually say don't do the creative writing piece in your exam because you'll fail. Yeah. He hadn't read any of the books so decided to do the creative writing piece and made up a book. Made up a book called, uh, do you know, I can't remember, it was about a DJ called Tony Peru and just made it up, talked about how like there's so many metaphors and when the guy was DJing and mixing tracks and metaphors and the guy's like, just made it all up. And got an A. Incredible. The teacher said, how did you manage that? And he just said, I just lied. There's <laughs> nothing they could do. <laughs> Obviously someone just never thought... I was like, do they never check? They don't even Google to see if the book exists. As far as they're concerned, you could talk about any old shite as long as you justified it. Anyway, Sinister Bottom. So this is actually it's our Richard Morgan special. Because I've actually picked some games that 
you're a fan you're a fan of okay okay because then if you don't get it it's even more embarrassing Joe actually usually does appallingly at this so right. let's see if you can usually beat it so I'm going to give you an easy one first mm-hmm. gigantic guy Mega Man yes <laughs> I've not made these too easy because yeah. I was like big man <coughs> big man my favourite game big man <laughs> busted youth busted youth busted youth Bust. Uh, is it Broken Age? It is. <laughs> it is Broken Age. Not knowing, of course, that Richard was going to talk about Broken Age for so long at <laughs> the start of the podcast. So two for two. This mm. is good. Right, okay. If you get this one, I'm going to be a bit upset. Cosmic Midnight Father. Space. Can I Can I guess one word at a time? You can guess one word at a time. <laughs> that's, how, that's how they come out of your mouth, so that's fine. <laughs> Say but all you three words you won't, you won't give me hints? You won't no, there's no hints. Give me any... I've told them. I've told you the games you like. That's way more than I ever give Joe. Cosmic. What was Mi- it? Cosmic Midnight Father. I'm trying to think of a game that ends with the word dad. <laughs> <laughs> Love me, dad. <laughs> it's not a game. I just. <laughs> what do you want for your Christmas? You want some games? Just love me, dad. <laughs> I'll go down Argos, but if they don't have it, you're not getting it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Um, cause we would for oh, fucking hell. You can give up. Is this this is a game that I like? I to see. Yeah. I don't like. I don't want. Right. Okay. Hold on. Give me another few seconds. Okay. Cosmic. No, I've not got it. Solo Jetman. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> that was good. Solo, J- Solo Cosmic Jetman. Midnight Father. That's Cos- three words. Jetman. That's two words, isn't it? Je- I suppose it is. <laughs> How did man f- father right? Okay. Yeah. Jesus. Right. Okay. Right, okay. <laughs> You're like raging, man. I'm really annoyed about that. It's a game. It's meant to be fun. <laughs> this could be the last podcast we do. Jesus. <laughs> now I don't think you like this game, but it's, it's in your wheelhouse. Okay. Principal Odyssey Charlatan exclusive effort. <laughs> Sorry, I'll try that again because Richie's face made me laugh. Right. What? Principal Odyssey Charlatan exclusive effort. Princip- is it Principal PLE? Principal is in like main. Yeah, as in the main. Right, main okay. The main of something. Pri- sorry, Principal. So I'll tell you how it's. The f- I'll tell you the format of it. So it's Principal Odyssey, colon, Charlatan, dash, exclusive effort. Sorry, I'm going to start with exclusive effort. So this is how the stroke starts. <laughs> <laughs> exclusive effort. Yep. So break it down. I'm trying to think of an alternative word for exclusive. I have to go backwards. I can, I've got nothing. I've got you get nothing. nothing. You can give up. It's cool if you if it's cool if you want to give up. It feeds me if you give up. <laughs> You've already got two so far. Exclusive effort. You giving up? I'm giving up. Star Trek Voyager oh. Elite Force. <laughs> Goodness sake! No, I wouldn't have got that one. <laughs> Never have got that one. I wasn't sure. I was like, I know you don't really. I know you like Star Trek. I know you don't like Star Trek Voyager, but it was the funniest Star Trek game <laughs> I could find. <laughs> and the final one. Grotto Fantasy. It's quite an easy one. Grotto Fantasy. Grotto Fantasy. This is an easy one. Mm-hmm. This is a game that I like. Yeah. Is it Mega Man again? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I have to get this one because. Yeah, you really have to. If you get three out of five, that's a pass as far as I'm concerned. Right, okay. Grotto. Two out of five, and I'm going to finish the podcast right now. Is it something dream? No. <laughs> no. Uh, you can concede. I don't. I, oh. I was doing so well at the you start. You were the first two. You were doing really well. Grotto fantasy. Grotto fantasy. You've got your given up face room. on. I'm just thinking of other words for grotto. Have you ever heard anyone refer to their room as a grotto? <laughs> no. You just think because a Santa's grotto. Yeah. <laughs> think that means Santa's room? <laughs> Santa's house. <laughs> ah! Right. No. You're giving up? I'm giving up. Cave story. Ah! <laughs> fantasy story that's it's, is that really what a thesaurus that's gives th- you when you say story thesaurus.com uh, it gives me other options but I, I like to go with what sounds funniest right okay how do you enough. feel about that um, two, two out of five which continues Joe's streak of not being very good at this is, is Joe's high score Two five I don't well. know if I think mate Joe maybe got three out of five once, right, okay. but it was only because I felt sorry for him and I really <laughs> gave him easy ones that time. Ah, uh, okay. 
<laughs> fine, fine. Continue, continue on. <laughs> Next. Being a guest on this podcast, you invited me to create a feature. Yes. Um, so it's a feature sort of, I think it's a feature you can only run once, but I've decided to call it... <laughs> You can't use it again. Um, it, I've decided to call it Robot Master or Robot. Ba- <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> robot, Robot Master or Robot Bastard. Nice. And basically, I have here a list of Mega Man bosses, mm-hmm. right, which are also referred to as Robot Masters. <laughs> and uh, you, you, have, to you have to tell me which ones are official and which ones aren't. Right. Okay. So okay. it's like a wee variation of... It's a wee variation of Is It Canon, basically. Nice. Don't worry, listeners, there will be an Is It Canon coming up as well. <laughs> <laughs> Don't turn off! I should have put them in the order that I wanted to use them. Okay. Oh, jinx. Right. So, I'm going to start Gyroman. Gyroman. Right, I'm going to say... I'm, I think that's legit. That's that's real. That's Gyroman. canon. Okay, yep, yep, well done. Gyroman's okay. from Mega Man 5. Sheepman. Sheepman. Hmm. I wonder what his special attack could be. Hmm, I'm... T- Mm, yeah, I'm going to go real. I think Sheepman sounds real. Yep, Sheepman's from Mega yes. Man 10. His special attack is um, he makes little sort of sheep clouds. Good enough no, we're really struggling by Mega Man 10, I think, basically. He's already had Cloud Man at this point. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what else? What else? They, oh, oh, I should probably point out that they're not all called Man. Right, okay, right. Okay. He says, reading the next one, which doesn't have the word Man in it. Yeah, the, well, the next one. Okay, the next one is Garbage Man. <laughs> no. That's not real. Yeah, it's not. It's not. It is no, but it is. Well, I'll tell you where it's from, though. Right. Okay. Uh, Garbage Man is a robot. Um, this is all from the Mega Man wiki, by the way. Garbage Man is a robot master from the television series Captain N, the Game Master. Ah. Uh, that only appeared shortly in the episode Mega Trouble in Mega Land because everything to Mega Man and Captain N was Mega. Right. Do you remember? Did you ever watch Captain N? No. Mega Man was this weird looking. He doesn't look like Mega Man. He's kind of green and blue. Mm-hmm. And he speaks like this, and everything's mega. <laughs> I'm right saying he speaks like an older gentleman from New York. A bit like, yeah. 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 Nice. I'm not going to do that voice again. Oh, no, can you read every question? <laughs> Shadow Man. Oh, right. Uh, no, I don't think that's real. No, I don't think that's in a game. Am I You're right? right. You're right. Wait. But no, the expl- you like the explanation behind this one. Right, okay. I chose one of a list here. <laughs> okay. So, Shadow Man, during the World's Collide crossover with Sonic the Hedgehog comic... Oh, yes. Dr. Wily teamed up with Sonic's arch-nemesis Dr. Eggman to capture Sonic's friends and turn him into special robots that were modified with Robot Master technology. So you had Tails Man, mm. Rose Woman... <laughs> Knuckle- oh, nice! <laughs> nice, that's good. Knuckles Man... Shadow Man, Silver Man, Blaze Woman, Charmy Man. You can see where it's going. Vector Man. Vector Man. Although I was going to say Vector Man because Vector Man is also a Mega Drive game. Nice. But anyway. Wait a minute. So were people paid to come up with that? <laughs> yes. That was... That's to be fair, absolute... it's the people that write the Mega Man and Sonic comics for Archie. Mm. They're still getting paid though, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah, I suppose so, yeah. Uranus. <laughs> <laughs> It's the way you've said that. It's way too sincere. <laughs> yes, I'm going to go for real. Well done. Wow. He's a, Uranus is a star droid from Mega Man 5. Wow. That has been uh, found and reprogrammed by Dr. Wily. You know, I've never played a Mega Man game properly. Really? I'm thinking about picking up... You can pick up Mega Man 2 for the 3DS, can't you? Mega Man 2 would be a good place to start. Mm, I think about it. Buster Rod G. I'm sure I've got his first album. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, oh, he's a boss from The Wily Wars, the Mega Drive remake of Mega Man 1, 2, and 3, which has a mini game at the end, like a s- small Mega Man game once you complete all mm-hmm. the first three. Yeah. So, therefore, I've never played it. <laughs> <laughs> DJ Jazzy J4 8950. Yes. Okay, I'll go for that. Yes. He's real. <laughs> no. What? <laughs> DJ Jazzy J48950 is one of the four robots featured in the Mega Man comic miniseries. He is introduced as the DJ slash sound system at the school dance until the lights inexplicably go out and then Mega Man has to fight him. Wait, he's the DJ and the sound system? <laughs> it's a bit like Mr. Boom. <laughs> nice. Right, I'll see. I'll, I'll give you one more. Right, okay. I've got a few here, but I'll give you one. Just find one more. Right, lay on me. The best one. Reggie. 
<laughs> it's not necessarily what you're saying, it's how you're saying it. <laughs> um, reggae. Yes, why not? That's real. Okay. okay, I'll give you half a point for that because okay. reggae, he's not a boss, but he is a character from... Mm-hmm. I've not written down the name of the game. Sweet, he's that's a, really good. <laughs> but he's a bird. He's a robot bird. Right. But it comes from the fact that all the in Japan, mm-hmm. all the me, like a lot of the Mega Man characters are named after genres of music. Did you know that? What? So, sheep. Do you know how, you know how he's Reek, Reek Man? <laughs> Reek <laughs> he's Man. Rock Man in Japan. <laughs> Reek Man. Oh he's yeah, he's called man. Rock Man. Ah oh, right. And then there's uh, Proto Man is Blues Man, I think. Why and did they change bass that? And I don't know. Rockman. Just didn't sound as cool as Mega Man. <laughs> so yeah, well done. You did pretty well. I didn't keep a score there, so Sweet, that was a really good feature, Richie. <laughs> I did have fun doing You're that, right though. about us not wanting to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> a regular feature that we have, Richie. Mm-hmm. Which is called Is It Canon? Yeah. Now I know you just did a kind of Is It Canon there, mm-hmm. which I appreciated. Good effort. Okay. Solid effort. Right. However, some of us are masters of cannon. <laughs> we we know how to load the cannon, clean the cannon, and fire the cannon, but not in that order. Okay. Because if you load it and then clean it, it's a point. You've already got it dirty. Who's the cannon and who's the ball? Well, I'm the cannon and I'm also the ball. <laughs> You're the target. Right. Right, so, is it cannon, as we've explained many times before, we look at everything to do with a video game series, the story, but it can also be licensed materials, it can be comics, books, t-shirts, anything that's been signed off on, it's part of the official licensed canon. Right. The point of this game is I'm going to tell you a few facts and ask you, is it canon? Or is it from my mind? Right. My mind canon. So basically the most twisted ones will be the non-canon <clears throat> Well, ones. you'd be surprised. There's one series that I've been thinking about a lot, and for some reason today was the day I'm going to explore it with you. Okay. So Rich, are you ready for it? Is it canon? Tony Hawks. <laughs> I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> me too, me too. Okay. Question number one. At the end of Tony Hawks Underground 2... Sorry. It's killing me already, sorry. Okay. Okay. That's okay. The end of Tony Hawks Underground 2 has Tony Hawk evacuating Skitopia, a massive skating event because Bam Margera, in an act of terrorism, has decided to blow it up. <laughs> is it canon? <laughs> blow it up. Bam I mean, Margera's going to blow it up. I know Bam Margera was known for, you know... No, he's going to blow up. Jumping on his dad when he was sleeping in Skitopia. But... Is it canon? It seems a bit... Ex- okay, I'm going to go for a yes. It seems it a bit is, extreme, but... It is canon. It's canon, You're right. right. Okay. okay. <laughs> One of these characters... Bam Margera taken to the... I, b- I believe he was shot. Right. Okay. In real life. One of these characters isn't in Tony Hawk's American Wasteland. Is it Mindy? Useless Dave? Iggy Van Sant? Or fuck not. Are there any of those you'd one like me to them repeat? Are, one of them aren't. So, three of those are legit, one of them is not. I'm going to say Mindy. So you say Mindy isn't in. Yeah. You really think there's a character called Fucknut in a Tony Hawk's game? <laughs> you just told me the last one, Bam Margera was going to blow up a Aye, skate so, park. No, Mindy's real. Mindy's the main love interest in Tony Hawk's American Wasteland. <laughs> She's, she actually writes an American. I, I she writes. Fuck, that was too obvious. She writes a fan magazine called American Wasteland. <laughs> <laughs> Spent a lot of time this morning reading about Tony Hawk's. Okay, question number three. In Tony Hawk Ride, you play as Tony Hawk's, who, yeah. after banging his head after failing to land a righteous Casper flip, has forgotten how to ride a board. As the player, you have to get him ready to skate for the president. Is that the story of Tony Hawk's ride? <coughs> it sounds like a plot from an episode of the Flintstones. Mm. Um, okay, yes. I'm going to say it is. No. You made that up? Yeah. <laughs> That's the point. <laughs> Jesus fuck, man. That's the point of the That's game. Good. That's... That's pretty uh, good. You should, you know... I should, you, you should, should send, send that off. That up. <laughs> send dear, that in there. Dear Tony. <laughs> right. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Is it too late to stop this? For the president? For the president? 
<laughs> that is not beyond the realms of believability. No, it's not. That's the point of the Yeah, I know, no, I know, I know. <laughs> this is good. Thanks. You're one of those guys that if you'd seen that film with the train coming towards the school, <laughs> and just like, get out! <laughs> anyway. One of the people that jumped off the bridge during the original War of the Worlds broadcast. <laughs> <laughs> Right, question number four. So far you've got so one right. <laughs> nice. In Tony Hawk's Underground, the protagonist is arrested in Russia for joyriding in a Russian tank and is bailed out by the US Embassy, but only if he does some tricks for the locals. <laughs> <laughs> is it canon? Is it canon? That is worse Yes. than the previous one. Mm-hmm. But is it canon? Did, did he joyride in a Russian tank <laughs> and get bailed out by the, Russian, by the US Embassy? But only if he does tricks, some cool flips. Is it canon? No. It is canon. Oh, you're joking! <laughs> it is. Come on! It's. I said the main villain is the one who really steals the tank, but the main character tries to stop the tank and gets arrested for stealing it instead. <laughs> and he gets kicked out of Team Hawks. <laughs> what I love about it is, right, you wouldn't have thought any Tony Hawks games had story, would you? <laughs> and yet. Okay, last one. Right. Okay. You've got one out of four. You can redeem yourself, right? The Tony Hawk's games have had loads of special guest characters, but which one of these hasn't been in a game before? Iron Man, Shrek, Wolverine, Django Fett, or Sir Ben Kingsley? Hasn't been in, hasn't a, been Tony game. in a Tony Hawk's game. So, so the re- what, only one of them... <laughs> So, hasn't. one of them hasn't. So, I'll read it again. Ben Kingsley. Iron Man. Are you sure? Iron Man, Shrek, Wolverine, Django Fett, or Sir Ben Kingsley? It's Ben Kingsley. It is. It's Ben Kingsley. Well done. <laughs> <laughs> I was hoping Shrek was, like, was going to throw you I off a wee bit. like, it's either Ben Kingsley or Shrek. <laughs> but How but often <laughs> do you think that decision comes up? <laughs> right, we're, we're needing to cast someone, a pretty good actor, a good range... Or down to two. I thought maybe it'd be like when Ben Kingsley was in The Sopranos. Is ben Kingsley in The Sopranos? Yeah, doesn't um, Christopher go and meet him when he wants to be a film writer or something? Uh, that is Ben Kingsley, right? No, is it not the fucking guy that directed like Iron Man and was in No, Chef? no, no, there's another, I'm sure. Right. Because he doesn't, he steals either his way, basket or something. Either anyway, way, right. right okay, either way, sorry. do you think that's enough of a justification to be the special <laughs> guest at Tony Hawk's game? <laughs> Oh, he's turned up in one episode of The Sopranos. Oh, he's of it, zeitgeist it, right? <laughs> Jesus. Two out of five. Two well, out of five. I, you know, at least I got that one right. You did. That's good. You got the easiest one right. I'm really pleased. <laughs> fuck nut. Who would fuck nut be? It's mad American skaters. It seems like a perfectly reasonable thing for a guy, a guy to be called fuck nut in a 12 plus Peggy rated <laughs> game. <laughs> That's a good point. Nice. So now we're going to round off the podcast with Say Your Bit. This is where we've posed you a wee question and we're going to have a look at some of the answers and hopefully have something vaguely amusing to say about it. If we don't have anything amusing to say, I'm going to cut it out of the podcast. So the question for episode 25 was, we'd like to hear about the game series you'd discard into the endless void and why. Not everyone gave us a why, but you know what? A plus for effort. I'm sure, you know, if you made the decision, surely the why is... Pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> yeah, because it's shit. <laughs> so we're we going to start on Facebook, Richie. Yeah, yeah. Aaron Smart says in before Sonic, even though that'd probably be my choice for obvious reasons. Mm-hmm. So I think Sonic comes up quite a lot. I think it'd be unfair to get rid of him completely. It'd just be good to maybe get rid of him at a certain point. Yeah. You know, like what they did with JFK just before Flicky's Island came out. Which one was that? In fact, don't even, don't even go into it. They killed JFK just before Flicky's Island. <laughs> Wait there. Was JFK killed by Flicky's Island? Someone threw a Flicky's Island from the grassy knoll? Yeah. No, that's probably fair. It's because Sonic just brings constant disappointment to everyone. Either constant disappointment or, well, no, not mild embarrassment, just... Total embarrassment. Total embarrassment. The thing is, do you not think some point there will be another one? Another amazing, brilliant Sonic game? And that's maybe it. It's like, if they, if they stop doing it now... That's it. It'll just always exist as a good game in the past. Or do you think they've just forgotten what made those games good in the first place? I don't know. I mean, I wouldn't say it was entirely impossible, but I'd say it was probably quite unlikely. Hmm. I'd say even the best Sonic games in the last 20-odd years have been ones that you're like, this, this, no, I mean, this... It's good in comparison to the other new shit ones. It's, it's, it's the sort of game that we're, we're, if someone was talking about it, they'd go, well, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> 
But even their attempts at being old Sonic are t- even... Are, they somehow managed to make them worse. Mm. Yeah. No, I, I, yeah, no, that's that's fair. I, I wasn't sure if you meant, like, cast them into the endless void, like, erase them from existence entirely, or that's so that they it's, never happened. It's kind of so it never happened. But I'm open to interpretation. Okay, okay. To democracy. Right, okay. Craig Wilson uh, says, Every Simpsons game ever... Mm-hmm. Also, the TV series can go into everything after Homer goes to space. He's got real beef with The Simpsons here. Mm. Also, Bart versus Juggernauts ruined my childhood. What's that? It's that a game. It's a game. Right, you? Bart versus Juggernauts. I don't remember that one. I've heard. I think I've heard about it. Not played it. To be fair, like the console ones. Mm. Yeah, they were all terrible. Um, but the arcade one. Uh, I honestly can't remember it. Simpsons arcade was a. It was a beat 'em up. Sort of side squares, oh, kind of street 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 type oh, thing. Oh, right, cool. And uh, a lot of us of a certain age remember. It feels like everyone's forgetting how good Simpsons Wrestling was in the PS1. Oh, I never played that. It was awful. It was oh, truly right, dreadful. Okay. My sister had it. It was, was that one. Total shite. It was Hit and Run. Was that any good? I never played no. that either. Has there ever been a good GTA clone? No. Really? No. Honestly. Darren Campbell says Final Fantasy. That's all he says. Final Fantasy. <laughs> I think I can understand certain elements of it people not enjoying. Especially I think more recently people do feel like they didn't get on with the 13 games. Not only if you didn't like 13 why would you feel inclined to then play 13-2 or then Lightning Return? So it almost feels like the last three big games yeah, in that series yeah, been, you just yeah. wouldn't be interested in. And then obviously there's 14 which now a lot of people are really getting into. That's the online, online one. one. Yeah, a lot of people really enjoying that one. But for some people, they think really the genuine the last good Final Fantasy was ten, because a lot of people kind of don't really count twelve. Eleven was online as well, mm-hmm. and some people go even further back. 12? Say, I remember twelve coming out and then kind of disappearing again pretty quickly. It felt like I think it came out right at the end of the kind of quite yeah. near the end of the PS 2s life was cycle. That, so yeah. it was kind of like came out and then they never obviously never did an HD version or anything. Mm-hmm. So. Uh, I've not honestly. I've I've watched someone uh, one of my old flatmates play twelve. I've never played it myself. It looked like fun, but my girlfriend at the time she bought it, and I remember watching. I never tried it mm-hmm. myself, but yeah, no. The one thing that struck me about it was how nice it looked. But um, yeah, I think it. I think it's an an important series in a lot of different ways. I think it does it has informed a lot of bigger things about games. And I mean, let's yeah. be honest. I mean, if it wasn't for the success of something like Final Fantasy Seven, mm-hmm. there'd be so many game series that never would have came out over here. Yeah, because I remember I was actually reading a thing in um, Retro Gamer. Sometimes something I pick up when I'm in Tesco and I'm I'm sad. And they were saying there was a lot of games that only really made it out of here, like the first Persona game. Yeah, only really made it out here because of the popularity of Final Fantasy Seven. Mm-hmm. I think well. If that had been the case, then so Final Fantasy never came out. There'd be so many games we wouldn't have seen on the back of it. James Peak, Pokemon. But he's, he's really, he sort of just goes Pokemon. Sue me. <laughs> right, okay. I've never been a fan of the series, and when your friends won't shut up about it, well, it just makes me hate it more. Hmm. I can. I'm not really. A po- I can Pokemon get that person. sentiment, but Pokemon seems like a sort of almost like a bit of a my first RPG for younger players yeah. and stuff, which I think is a really good thing. Mm-hmm. Also, if you get rid of it, no cartoon. Well, exactly. Laura Rice Quinn says Animal Crossing and Tomodachi Life, not yet a series, so I can get on with actually achieving something in my real life. Tom- both of those games, my girlfriend Kate, she's not she's not someone I've seen put like endless hours into any particular game. She likes playing games. Yeah. But if you look at her counter on Tomodachi Life mm-hmm. and Animal Crossing. It's more hours than I've ever put into anything. It's a time sponge. Yeah. And those games, when you, you've you got a big, massive stack of other games to play, but then you're putting all your time into these sponges. Mm-hmm. So sometimes I can get that, kind of, you want rid of it, but I think games like Animal Crossing, they're so much fun. They're so yeah, full yeah, of yeah. life. Yeah. They're just incredibly pleasant as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Harvest yeah. Moon as well. I used to put so much time into Harvest Moon games. Right. Until like the inevitable storm would happen and my fucking shed would blow away and I'd be <laughs> raging. That did happen once and I was <laughs> boiling with anger. Your shed has fallen down. I was like, fuck off! <laughs> fuck off! It's because I had like a st- uh, wooden shed instead of a stone shed and the game was like, you fucking idiot. How dare you buy more cattle? Fucking lawn covered in dead chickens. <laughs> Twitter. We're moving on to Twitter now. Okay. So let's have a look here. Up first, we've got Gavin Spence. He says, Advance Wars. And he takes it back almost immediately. <laughs> he says he likes it as well. He's just in a bad mood. 
we'll get it like that. It's a shame Advance Wars. I'd love to play an Advance Wars on the, the 3DS, but it feels like it's just not coming. Not going to happen, yeah. Because I think they did, I think, is it um, Dark Conflict? I think you can play on the Wii U. Mm-hmm. Part of Nintendo's amazing strategy to release handheld games on the Wii U. <sighs> I know, it's fucking... I mean, don't it's get me really, wrong, right? Yeah. It's good to bring out games on the Wii U. Mm-hmm. Legitimately good. However, bring out a handheld version of handheld games. That is only fair. We're not asking for you to put Mother on it. On, uh, uh, yeah, I know, I know. Because um, obviously I've got the... Not obviously, but I got the Ambassador yeah. program uh, on the 3DS. So I've got those, you know, playing GBA games on the 3DS is great. Mm-hmm. They've actually put them up now on the Club Nintendo site. I saw you that, You can yeah. use your points yeah, and they are cool. ridiculously priced. Yeah. It's like, what? <laughs> Buy 40 games Buy 40 you games. Can get Super Mario Land. <laughs> Buy 40 games and you can get this original Game Boy game. <laughs> so Wind Waker su- ringtone. <laughs> so sweet. <laughs> You're there, Wind Waker ring. What would that even work as? Like, can you even put a custom ringtone on an iPhone? I mean, uh, uh, anyway... No. Sorry, Nintendo. Sorry. <laughs> Jim, at Let's Hug Bro, he said, Metal Gear Solid, so that Hideo Kojima can be free at last. Now, this was said before all the recent Konami yeah. controversy, where is he going, is he not going? Personally, I don't really care. What do you think is going to happen to Metal Gear Solid? After Metal Gear Solid 2 finished, right, mm-hmm. he said, I don't, I'll help with the next one, I'm not directing it. Mm-hmm. Then he directed 3. Mm-hmm. But he said, 4, I'm not going to direct 4, I'll help out. Then he directed four. And he said, but four is the end of this. I'm, there won't be any more. And then immediately he made Peace Walker. Right. And then they made Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes and Phantom Pain. Which yeah. kind of, I, as a wonder, think of as Metal Gear Solid 5. I think, I was reading that because he's helmed it for nearly 30 years. And you think, think about that. Th- I know. Can you think of a movie director who's helmed a series for 30 years on their own? <laughs> no. It, do, it <laughs> actually sounds insane. Outside of, outside of people who write book series. Mm-hmm. Or, I, I mean, and I'm ignoring bands here, that doesn't count. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but in terms of that, it's like, that's really pretty intense stuff. It is, yeah. yeah. It's like, eventually it would have to move on. That's a shame because you forget that he has done other games. <laughs> Rich Stanton says, The Elder Scrolls, fuck off, you stupid faced wanks. <laughs> so, it's feeling pretty, pretty strongly about that. Not going to really argue with him. Not a huge fan of the Elder Scrolls games, to be perfectly honest. I find them a wee bit tedious. I know there's a lot of love there for them, a lot of people really enjoy them. I don't think they're for me, but then I, I think, as we all know, I like my, my RPGs, Japanese in flavour. Right, okay. I, 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 my main experience of Oblivion was... Uh, <laughs> was gazing into it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, like, this is in no way, I, you know, I shouldn't, shouldn't be taking this any sort of strong opinion, but um, I do remember, like, most of the time I was playing Oblivion, what I seemed to be doing was running backwards from enemies, <laughs> stopping hitting them, and then running backwards again. Yeah. It's the best and, uh, I didn't. I didn't enjoy it. Would you stop it? Although I quite enjoyed... I was enjoying what I played of Skyrim. But it's the same thing, though, isn't it? You had a guy then run away back. No, it was a wee bit better in Skyrim. It wasn't... Did you have to run as far back then? <laughs> I just have to go back a wee bit. <laughs> Adam Staff says, Crash. So, of Crash Bandicoot fame. Oh, right. <laughs> You looked at me very blind. Waiting for the, 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 the David remake. the David Cronenberg <laughs> film. I hate the bit where he slaps a bulb in a wound. Uh, <laughs> Adam Staff says, "Crash, the worst example of anthropomorphic mascot bullshit." Well, there's got to be worse than Crash Bandicoot. Oh, there's, I th- but I think he is bad though. He is bad, but there's a lot of it. I suppose in terms of high-profile ones, maybe because obviously there's a lot of really cheap rubbish ones. Fucking Gex. Gex <laughs> Was Gex the one that was voiced by Danny John Jules? I've got no idea. Okay. Absolutely no idea. James Pond. There's so many bad ones. So let's have a look here. Just a couple more we'll go for. Did you hear that joke why why are EA the worst was it why are EA the worst game the games company in America? I don't know. Lay on me. Ubisoft are in Canada. <laughs> or something like that. It's a good joke. Thanks for that. <laughs> We're, we, we do like to keep things kind of jokey here, and you've really you've you've lived up to that. So uh, <laughs> Richie's legitimate. That was joke. someone else's joke. I read it on Twitter. Shit. So you didn't even. So I didn't even come up with it. No. Wow. You've stolen someone else's joke, and you've read. It, you've made it sound so bad. <laughs> okay. So Hadruken says Mario games. Damn Nintendo with their joy and their color and the superb design, making other series and designers look bad. Feels like I wrote that myself. <laughs> Nintendo or Doom, Danny? No. 
Nintendo are doomed. That's a, as far as I'm concerned. Nintendo are gone, man. I got rid of all my Nintendo stuff. Xbox One for life. There was a there was a short period. That, well, it might still be going on. That every time I read a story about Nintendo being successful, mm-hmm. it always had to be in the context. They always have a they always have a paragraph. It's like, but they're still you know doomed. They're still having trouble yeah. selling Wii U. <laughs> there was an article that went up um, this week. Now, bearing in mind, of course, this is going to be the area of time with when you listen to this. Um, they went up talking about Nintendo having obviously said they're working on their next console yeah. and saying there's an article about the, the failure Nintendo admits the Wii U was a failure <laughs> because they're working on the next console is that the same way that Sony admitted the PS2 was a massive failure when they started working on the PS3 it's fucking ridiculous it's an absolute joke it's like every console manufacturer like, right now Sony will be working on something yeah, hardware yeah. related of course they are Yeah. same with Microsoft mm-hmm. it'd be daft to think that a company brings out a console and then gives the R&D guys like a month off <laughs> you know what that's the way you out guys <laughs> same time in two years right see on a bit just you're all unemployed now for three to four years until we need someone to come in and design hardware and then we need you to turn it around within about three months so we can reveal it to E3 Fucking idiots! I know it's just absolute nonsense. It's just, but it's the same for any of them. It's the same for if they said, "Oh, you redesigned the PS4 coming out." Oh, Sony must be worried. I was worried they've only sold twenty million <laughs> consoles. Fucking! It's like the I story don't. about um, what was it? You know, Nintendo Jack moving stopped. into <laughs> moving into developing mobile stuff. Yeah, and it's like it sort of went from Nintendo are looking at developing some mobile apps mm-hmm. um, to. Nintendo's games are all moving to mobile. Yes. <laughs> you can play Mario on your iPhone today. <laughs> right, just going to do uh, three more. Ernest Goth. Uh, it says Metal Gear Solid. I thought that was the name of a, an IP. An IP. That, that I, the Ernest Goth that, game. Uh, that sounds like a PS1 game, to be honest with you. I love... Are you playing Ernest Goth? No, my mum won't let me. Fuck her. <laughs> Ernest Goth says Metal Gear Solid because I want to watch you boys sweat and cry into the night like a couple of wolves. Thank you. Thank you. You mustn't realise that I'm on. Yeah, exactly. You don't care. <laughs> uh, Small Hands France, Halo. He says, quite likes the Halo games, but piss off so many fanboys, and that's what I was put on this earth to do. <laughs> Fair <laughs> enough. And last one we're going for, Aidan O'Donnell. He says, I'd obliterate Dota just to get a one over on the absolutely acidic fan base. No comment. Never played a. Uh, oh, everyone's answer here seems to be to piss someone else. I want to get rid of this game yeah. to piss someone else I, off. I love playing these games, but I hate the other people I like playing. <laughs> Fair enough. All valid answers, because you know what? We're all good human beings. Because why? You listen to the Bit Socket podcast. And this is the end of episode 25 of the Bit Socket podcast. Now, Richie, would you like to promote any of your nonsense? Um, like your Twitter name and any of the things that you create? That I create, Christ. Um. My Twitter, yeah, okay, if you want to follow me on Twitter for some reason, um, I'm at um, Laszlo underscore Panaflex, uh, and I do a podcast called Game Wank. Mm-hmm. Um, I usually just tell people to Google the word Game Wank, it's all one word, because there's not really much else out there with that associated with that word. Um, and I also do a film podcast called The Films, F-I-L-L-U-M-S. Mm-hmm. Which, also, if you Google it, you should find it. Because I can't remember the URL. Nice. <laughs> this is really good. I'm glad you've really prepared for this. And, uh, of course, uh, in terms of BitSocket, uh, you can follow us on Twitter, at BitSocket. You can find us on Facebook, which is also BitSocket. You can find us on YouTube, following enough at BitSocket. And, of course, if you haven't already, please like and subscribe to the podcast as well, because all the nice wee reviews make us feel nice in our tummies. And if you've really disliked hearing Richie on this, it's okay. He won't be coming won't, back. Be back. He's not coming back. We'll be invited back again. That's it. So, thanks for listening. Keep, Keep it socking. Sockin'. That was such enthusiasm there. <laughs> Do you not have like a sign off? No. Why not? Bye. It's usually bye. <laughs> but it doesn't have your brand in it. Keep bye. game wanking. Bye, and then some heavy breathing. <laughs>